Okay. Welcome, welcome everyone to our special Pesach 2023 Amuna Live edition. AmunaLive.com. Amuna is our future with the Mashiach flow. Mashiach now is the time uh, that we need Mashiach more than ever, and it's a time we have the power together to uh, to make a class and to make an energy with tefillah and prayer with our full heart and our full energy to power, please God, <laughs> a Mashiach flow. I'm asking all of you to help make this class worthwhile. The reason why I'm doing it is because this Shabbos that just was, Shabbos Pesach, Cholom we had the pleasure to hear from a wonderful person who asked me to put this into a class format and she will share it with her groups. And the concept was given over in Shirat David community, the uh, beautiful shul in Afrat. And we thank obviously our hosts, Brez of Israel, Brez of English, Rav Shalom Morish, Rav Shalom Ben Yemna, we dedicate to his full healing. And in the, the merit of this class, we also dedicate to the full healing of Leah Basipura, who's fighting for her life right now. And everyone out there should pray for Leah Basipura. We should dedicate any learning we're doing together now, also on the Zerah Shimshon, featuring there as well. We want to make sure everyone's learning these books of Rav Shalom Morish, the Gandam Muna series, and the Zera Shimshon. We have a new class now in Efrat. We want to keep encouraging Torah and Amuna going together. This is the flow of Pesach 2023. It's a Mashiach Tika flow. It incorporates all the United Souls concepts that we've been discussing for these many, many months. I want to thank everyone who's uh, contributed to the Shirim over the past few months. And now... The fact that we're doing a special Erev Shvisha Pesach class, you'll see why it makes sense that we're going to discuss certain concepts. And I'm happy to see that we're live. Everyone can hear me, I assume, on the Instagram live, Facebook live, YouTube live, and also we'll put it up, please God, on the podcast platform after the class is done on Breads of Israel. When is our future podcast and when are podcasting? It's very important to us to keep growing all these platforms. I hope everyone's having a happy Pesach here in the Holy Land in Efrat. We are going through challenges, as I'm sure you've heard. And I would recommend going to Rav Shlomo Katz's um, streams to see how he's been discussing the recent tragedies that have taken place, as well as Avi Abelo. Um, you can see the Levaya of those two beautiful girls who, unfortunately, from the D family were murdered just Erev Shabbos, just after a beautiful Seder night. And a beautiful first day of Yom Tov here in the Holy Land. And you guys, many of you were still in Yom Tov in the rest of the world and heard after Shabbat, as we heard already before Shabbat, this tr terrible tragedy as well as the critical condition of Lucy D. Rabbi D spoke recently at the Leviah, Rabbi, I believe, Lee D, Leo D, excuse me, and he spoke very, very deep and moving, movingly to all the world and specifically to the Nishamas, the souls, the united souls of, of these two beautiful Nishamas that have, have left the world due to this terrible tragedy. So we're going to get into a Mashiach Tika flow. First we need to dedicate to these souls. We need to understand that we are souls. This is really the only comfort we have with these kind of tragedies. That If there is any comfort that we are souls. We're Nishamas and people go on to a better place, on to Gan Eden, to the Garden of Eden, to spiritual realm. And they did their tikka and they did what they needed to do in this world. And they go to the highest places, the holiest places, and they can be Melech Yosha. They can look out for us who are left behind in this uh, difficult situation. We pray that there should be peace in the world, peace in the land. And those who uh, do such terrible things as murder should be brought to justice. A core of Mamish. We need justice in the world, we need uh, law and order, we need kindness, we need love. And that was one of the big concepts we spoke about this pace of the Shabbos so far, the Shabbat Cholomayed, the concepts of love. Shlomo Katz did a beautiful class after such a difficult tragedy about how Hashem still loves us. It's not something which ever separates our love. In fact, this is how we develop our love. And we increase our love through these tragedies, through these difficulties. Shir Hashem was written as a parish on Yosef Yisrael because we understand that going through the struggles, through the challenges, is where the love is most expressed in the deepest, most committed way. 
Shira Yam, we're going to sing, please God, Shvisha Pesach. It's a song of love, a, a song of eternal connection to our Father in heaven, Zerkeli Veniveu, and how there we're bringing this godly presence into the world, into the third base of Migdash, into our homes, into the Mokim and Migdash, Yushalayim Rav Kodesh. We're building together that Mashiach experience through the Shira, through Az Yoshe. But before we go there, let's first go into what we spoke about at Musaf, just before Musaf, excuse me, in Shirat David. And it's difficult to speak in, you know, this time of year and it's Cholam I don't usually do classes during the Cholam but for you guys and for the request, I did say if anyone requested it, I would do it. So I appreciate if you could share this, make this class worthwhile, make a Muna global bring Torah, share, subscribe to all the links, to all the things we're doing. Keep helping, keep joining together so that we can make these dedications to these beautiful souls through more Torah, through more learning, through more kindness, through more tefillah, through more joy, through more togetherness. And hopefully by spreading and sharing the light, the darkness will be reduced and shown what it is. And the Sheka will be reduced and shown what it is. And the truth, the emes, Emmet was stand. This is how we began our speech on Shabbat day, this Shabbos. And we spoke about the concept that truth is really everything. And if you go to the Torah Shulchan Aruch on the concepts of the Shalosh Regalim, we have three beautiful festivals in the Rosh of all the Regalim, of all the festivals is Pesach. Pesach is an ego, it's a round, a circle, matzah. It's a concept of the beginning of the calendar of, of the festivals of the year we spoke about Nis Chodesh Nisan is Azman, a time of the Rosh Chodeshim, it's the head of all the months so Pesach is the head of all the festivals, it's been in the middle of Chodesh Nisan already now, in the, past the middle of the Chag of Pesach Erev Shvisha Pesach we're going to hear a little bit how the whole calendar is mapped out from Rosh Chodesh through to Lel Seder, Lel Seder is connected to the Taf, what is the Taf, the Saf the Taf of Tishabav. We go at Bash, we go backwards in the Aleph base, even though Chodesh Nisan is always in Seder. It's the idea of Aviv, the Aleph base, begins Chodesh Aviv, it's the Aleph base in order, the Kevavke in order. It's the Gilui of Hashem's kindness, of His love. But in Mitzrayim, we're going out of that difficulty together, but we're going backwards now in the calendar. Taf, Taf is connected to the first night, the Aleph of. Pesach, the first day of Pesach, and that's Tisha B'av. Tisha B'av, we have a Zeicher by eating the bear, the, the egg, with the tears represented by the salt water, and the egg is a food of availus of mourning, and we eat that Lel Seder as a Zeicher to the Chum Beis Amin, to the destruction of our temples, the representation, the Shechina, the Mokham Shechina, and together we have the opportunity to connect in on such a holy night like Seder night into the light of Tisha B'av, to understand that in the Golis is an Aleph which brings the Gula which very close is the exile to the redemption it's always that concept the Nachash is Gematri Mashiach it's always that concept that the new Mokha value of the one who caused the whole exile Nachash the, the first original snake is the Gematri the new Mokha value of Mashiach Mashiach is there in the name of the Nachash in the one who caused the destruction is the one that brings, eventually we turn it around, we, we change, we transform the darkness into light. That is the purpose of creation. And so Lel Seder, the biggest night of the year, where we say halal a few times of a blessing, a full halal. And we do such beautiful things with our family, regardless of the bin chalabi we have a hemshech adoyris all the way down to now, to 2023, to 5783, and coming up to a new year, 5784, the opportunity to elevate this time and transform it from a Tisha B'Av year of exile into a year of redemption. That's the first night, tough. Shin, that's the second day of Pesach, the Shin, we're going backwards, remember the Aleph base. Shin is Shavuos. Shavuos, Shavuot is the concept of the culmination of counting, or Surya Sa'oma, which we're in now, and we come to seven weeks, seven times seven, 49 days, we reach that 50th day, the, Sh the Shanun, Nun Sharinun Torah, Sharinun Bina, Sharinun Tahara, we reach that level of 50th gate, the 50th level, 
and we don't count the Shavuos, the Shavuos itself, just by coming into that festival. So that's the second day of Pesach, which this year, the first day was a Wednesday night Thursday. So Shavuot will come out on a Thursday night Friday, just as Tisha B'Av will come out on a Wednesday night Thursday, just like the first day of Pesach. Shavuot will come out on a Thursday night Friday. So we're going to be going into Shabbat with Shavuot this year. So we'll be mapping out the calendar. Remember, this is the head of all the festivals. This is all based on the Torah Shulchan Aruch. Beautiful concept. Then we go into the next letter, Shabbat. This Shabbat was Kenegad Rosh Hashanah, the Reish, Tafshin Reish. We're back to the Reish, the Reish, the, the Rosh, the Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the new year. Tafshin Pei Dalid will come out on the Shabbos. We won't blow the shofar. As we said this week, unfortunately, the cold shofar is coming out from our heart. We don't need a shofar this year because our Hearts are screaming. Saka, we're harachamani. Chazalon of us, base of Migdash, as Rav Shlomo said. We need to bring the base of Migdash with the screams of Am Yisrael, calling out to Hashem. This is the Rosh Hashanah. This is the, the Rosh Hashanah of Tashem Pei Dalet, the Shabbat. We don't blow the shofar. We have the opportunity to call out to Hashem with our hearts. Rahman Alibi boy. Hashem wants our hearts. So that's how we begin the new year coming up. A year of pejonus, of redemption. And then... We go into the concept of the next letter of Kuf, which is Kriya, Simchas Torah. So someone pointed out, interestingly, that Kriya is also the concept. Simchas Torah is only Eretz Yisrael, and Chutzlai will be the next day. So it will be Saturday night, Sunday in Eretz Yisrael, and the next day will be Sunday night, Monday. But we're talking about here, in, I think, in Eretz Kodesh, I believe, or Chutzlai, so to remind me, correct me if I'm wrong. But the concept of Simchas Torah is the Kuf, Kriya. We're reading the Torah and we're celebrating the Torah. And that, this year will come out on a Saturday night, Sunday. Mashiach took a Motsi Shabbos, dancing with the Torah, the completion, the Shlemus, the Simcha. There's no bigger day than Simchas Torah, the, 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 the climax of Tishrei, the, this beautiful time. And we'll talk about it as we get closer. But this is already mapped out in this week. And we already had that yesterday. Now we're on Monday. We're already Sunday night, Monday. That's going to be the Som, the Yom Kippur. That's a day of fasting, a day of repentance, a day of tshuva, tshuva hey, returning everything back to Hashem. And then we come to tonight, Tuesday night, sorry, Monday night, Tuesday. Monday night, Tuesday is Purim, is the pay. But Purim was not going to be Monday night, Tuesday this year. It's going to be, it was the previous Purim was Monday night, Tuesday. So we have the concept that Purim is connected to Lag Ba'oma, to Shimon Bar Yochai's light, Pelek. So the concept is really, it's mapping out when Lag Ba'oma would be this year, and, uh, and remind us of the light of Purim that was, and join together a light of Lag Ba'oma that is, it's going to come out on a Monday night, Tuesday, with Shem Yochai's special day, the 33rd day of the Surah Sa'oma. We're going to celebrate, please God, as we're counting towards that, as we come out of Pesach, we count towards a happy time of, of Pesach Sheni, and, and please God, the Lag Ba'oma, and we count towards Rosh Chodesh Sivan, and towards, please God, the Shavuos, the Baal Satoris, that we mentioned before, but it's going to come out on a Monday night, Tuesday, this special time. Hopefully this year will be safe and everyone will be able to travel where they need to go safely in Moron, etc. And we should only hear Simchas. And then we have the opportunity after we get to the pay, to the Ayin. And this is the climax. This is Tuesday night, Wednesday, this year, Pesach, is Shvisha Pesach. But what is the Ayin? So the Torah Shulchan Aruch doesn't say what it is. It leaves out. From all the days it, it made a hint, it leaves the Ayin open. It doesn't say what Ayin is. So we're going to say what Siddiquim say. This concept of iron is connected to the Elbow Matzah. The idea of the circle. Yeah? You see a strimal on my head. It's a circle. Yeah? I'm wearing this to cover the Chag. As I spoke on Shabbos with the strimal as well. For the opportunity to wear our Big Day Shabbos, Big Day Yom Tov during the Chag. There's a connection, hopefully, for all of us this year. The iron will also represent the iron collars, the screaming out. This I didn't mention Shabbos. But it's the concept of Hevle Mashiach. Right now, what we just went through in, in a frat is the Hevle Mashiach. It's an aspect of the birth pangs of Mashiach. And we're screaming out to Hashem, the kol, the koilis of Hevle, of giving birth. This creates a new creation, a new being in the world. So such a fundamental, important moment comes together with screaming. And that's like just like we went out with Israel and we were given birth as a nation. So too, this iron koilis. So the iron represents these iron screams, but it also represents the ego, as we said, the circle, this concept of dancing, mochel sadikim, zeh Hashem kivinu we mentioned Rav Sodik concept, 
And when Mashiach comes, we're all going to stand there with our fingers pointing. Is there Hashem? We're going to point Hashem in the center. True equity, true equality is going to come out because we're going to be able to dance together and unify. The concept of united souls will be revealed. The ideas that we've been discussing over here over the many um, classes together, the concept of united souls of coming together in a unified way will be manifest. And that will be the ultimate comfort because we'll come together as one soul, as one being. Zer Hashem Kibino, we're going to be pointing into the center and dancing this moch of this iron. So really what the iron, what the Shri Shalpesa represents is the song la Asid, is the idea of the Chag la Asid, the concept that all the time we hear these hints and remozim and, and and deep desires for the Moshe Mashiach, for Mashiach now, for the concept of the Gilui of the Shechina of Hashem revealing His light in the full completion in this world. So it comes out, the iron represents the Shri Shal Pesach, this concept of Mashiach. This is the Az Yosha, the song we we'll ultimately sing, this 10th song, the 10th Paraduma. This concept of 10 would be Shlemus. We have, we have it over here in the, uh, in the aspect of the hands. It's, it's built into our essence, the concept of 10 as we're going to talk about as we get towards the Ten Commandments, the Ten Opportunities for us to become more unified with our Creator and to unify our souls. The concept of binary, everything in coding is built through this concept of Ten. All of creational technology has this pattern within it. And it's the concept of unifying everything. So we, we have that ability on Shri Shalpesa to call out, to scream out for the most of Mashiach, for Mashiach now. And this is something we shouldn't just forget about. We already posted a, a recent post, an article from our Brezlov.com website, the idea of the Suda's Mashiach that we're going to have, please God, the Baal Shem Tov Suda, the, the Brez of us have, and the Chabadniks have the Suda's Mashiach, the concept of togetherness. So we mentioned now, we're going to go through a few books that we have here. This is a continuation of the Shabbat Joshua. So we have Rav Shalom Arash's beautiful Haggadah, as you can see it has on the front, the concept of the base of Migdish. Yeah? For those on Instagram, it's a little bit blurry. We have the, that's the fun, dreamy look. We have the base of Migdash, and he has a beautiful Kiddush that I've never seen in any other Haggadah. The concept that when you begin the Simonim, yeah, you don't begin with Kaddish, which every other Haggadah in all of history has always begun with Kaddish, Uchatz, etc. Yeah? We begin with something else, and we're going to see in a moment. I didn't get it ready, so you're going to have to give me a moment while I find it. But the concept that says in the Haggadah of Rav Shalom Arash, and this is a big Kiddush, and it shows his, his Koyach, his ability to Mechadish. Lifne Ko says here, Amuna, on page 116 on Rav Shalom Arash, it says Lifne Ko Amuna. Yeah, everyone can see it in the Instagram, you have to go to Facebook Live if you want to see it. YouTube, you can see. Lifne Ko Amuna. Yeah, before everything is one word, Amuna. There we're learning about Amuna every all the time. Amuna is our future. Amuna is the key to Geula. Kade Shuchatz. Then we get to the rest of the Samanim. Kade Shuchatz. Karpas Yachatz. Magid Rachs. Moitzi Matzah Mara Korech Shulchanor. Sofen Berach Hillel Nitza. We got the idea, the concept of Nitza. We get to this climax. So I have a beautiful Agada here that my brother-in-law back in the day. He wasn't my brother-in-law then. We were in Shiva Chavusa, a good friend, not marrying his twin sister. He gave me this beautiful sis, beautiful. Not just beautiful sister, because that was my soulmate. Check out the Relationship Flow podcast. I put up a beautiful uh, video with the middle ground book. You can check it out. The idea, he gave me this beautiful Agada, the Hasidic Agada. I was in Yeshiva, in my more Yeshiva days, and it was a very uplifting Agada to receive in that time. Until now, I've got tremendous chizuk and inspiration. If you go to, all the way to Nirza in your Agada, and if you have this Agada, even better, you can see it inside. It's page 140, whoever has this beautiful Agada, I recommend getting it. He says, a beautiful concept. Next year in Yushalayim, Shona Haba Yerushalayim. Yeah, so we're first going to read what the Balatanya says on Chasal to the, 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 the bit we read, before, just as we say near it, so we say Chasal to the Pesach. It says, Rabbi Shneer Zalman of Liadi, the Balatanya is a Chusal of Liadi Once Once the Seder has been completed, that's the translation. Did not insert this passage in the text of his Agada. The Passover of the Seder is never completed. That's Jan's idea. We never finish with Pesach. Rather, it continues to shine forever, its influence extending without end. That's brought down by Rabbi Yosef Yitzhak of Lubavitch, the Frida Kareb. A similar concept expressed by those who recite the passage. The first letter of the first read words, Chasal Seder Pesach, spell out Pesach. 
the very conclusion of Pesach emphasized continued relevance. That's from Chaim Meir of Vizhnitz. Chaim Meir of Vizhnitz says that the Pesach continues. That's why Hasal to the Pesach is the first letter as Pesach. Yeah? Because it's continued. We don't end off with Pesach as a bye-bye. We continue with Pesach. So the concept is we're continuing with the light of Pesach for the whole year. This is, this is the truth. This is the, the emes, the, the nitzchias, the, the, the eternity of our mitzvahs. Every smile, every chesed, every kindness. And this to understand is a comfort to the souls who just left us. They're netzach, they're netzach, netzach, and they're eternal beings. So they're not leaving us really, they're always with us. They're physically not here, but the spiritual resonance, the legacy. The soul level, the mitzvah is eternal. Whatever they did in this world, the smile and the joy of learning, this brought down so much eternity. And these souls I heard have tremendous eternity from the way they've spoken, the Levi, the family, the thank you Hashem from the youngest sister, the way the father spoke from the leaf, the D family, awesome people, awesome souls. So it says, next year I'm new built Yushalayim. That's another comforting concept, this idea. The Shanabab Yushalayim. There'll be Trias and Mason, things like this, so that's also a comfort. But is it possible to say that each year many holy Siddiq can recite this prayer with all their heart at the Seder, all our Bobas, Zaydas, Saftas, Sabas, on Yom Kippur without being answered? Surely God responded to their plea. However, he met their wish by extending influence of Yushalayim, revealing it throughout the world. As the Pesikta Rabbi teaches in the Mashiach days, Eretz Yisrael will encompass the entire world. So now we want to put a silence to all these accusers, to all these negative judgments and opinions out there that question the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael. How will they be able to challenge the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael? By the way, everyone should be sharing their feedback, please. It means a lot to us. I'm even going to say something myself. The idea, the concept of Tada, thank you Hashem, the idea of having appreciation and love, these are Meshirtika concepts, and just as they expand and joy and love expands outwards it says uh, the concept of a tefach sochik when we're going to learn the sochus please go on the idea that it's an expanded version of the tefach it's a bigger level bigger measure bigger meter instead of being closed it's expansion simcha is expansion joy is expansion and mashiach comes it's, it says melech poritz geda all this all the boundaries that are holding back the love of hashem and between us and hashem the zivuk eternal oneness of our souls with the God will be removed and this love will be spashet throughout the whole world. So the concept of, of the shira, of song, of song and everything else we're doing will spashet throughout the whole world, will spread out. Yushalayim will become the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael. So Eretz Yisrael now, I mean the place of Eretz Yisrael, the Kedusha of Yushalayim will expand into the land of Eretz Yisrael and the land of Eretz Yisrael, the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael will spashet, which spread out to the whole world. And the way we see it in a deep way is on every human being. Every human being is walking around with this deep truth of unification, of oneness, of Mashiach. This concept of Mashiach is Megale, it's anointed one, is going to Megale the truth of Hashem Echad. So what's this idea of Hashem one? So every person has in their eye, has in it, a deep, intense Gevura part of the eye, the black. That's the Yushalayim. That's a place of avoda, a place of, of service, a place of serving a higher power, the concept of a vodas Hashem, that's the black part of the eye. And then the green or brown or whichever colour you are, is then the next part is the world. That's because ultimately all the seven continents, the seven notes, everything's going to unify. All the seven colours, everything's going to ultimately unify. The seven days of the week and unify to a higher level, to an eighth level, to a Shemini. We're going to get to next week's Shabbos, Pasha Shemini. Actually this Shabbos coming up, funny enough. Because we, this was a drush given on Parsha's Pesach, but now we're going to be talking about Shmini. Next Shabbos, this Olam Shmini. We're going to talk about the holiness of eating and the holiness of Avodah, of Kobonas, the idea that the souls of Nadu Nabil went out like Kobonas, just like these beautiful girls, two of them, the two siblings, as all the other siblings. They went out like beautiful, clear, pure Kobonas sacrifices to Hashem and elevated the whole world instead of us having, God forbid, to go through worse things. They were the kapara, they were the, we can understand or say these things, but this happened in Pasha Shmini, the Nadav and Nabil went up as pure sacrifice to Hashem. Hashem took them. And the concept of Shmini, this idea of this Olam is Shmini, this level beyond, it's going to unify everything. So this, the black part of the eye is the Gavur, the, 
the green brown part is Tiferis, and the white part is the waters of the world surrounding all the seven continents that are going to unify around Eretz as well, around Yushalayim. This is the unification that's going to take place, and every person, Bas Ayan, has this in their eye, has the map of creation. The ultimate, we're all going to unify, we're all going to come together in an intense place called Yushalayim, and then in a surrounding place, Eretz as well, and then the Ches of the love, the Mayan Rabbim, these, these, what, these huge lo love of water, of love, of connection, of, that brings so much life, Chaim, to the world, it's going to surround us with this eternal love. This is the Abbas Olam Apatich, this is the, the eternal love that's constantly surrounding us, this concept of Chesed, the white, the white is the Chesed. So really every person's eye maps out these concepts. So we're walking around with humanity, with all the spiritual keys, we have the ten, we have this binary aspect of, of creation of ten, of one, regala, the constant truth of creation, that we're made in the image of God. There's so many signs and understandings in deep ways of how the face is made up of Shemus of Kodesh, of the, the name of Hashem, without getting into it, but the concept of two eyes and a vav is Yud, Yud, and a vav is the Shem of Vaya. We talk about it at the end of Sefer Bereshis when it says, Aaron. Aaron, uh, Yosef Asadik's Aaron. It says Vav Yud Yud, the interesting language. So the answer of Vav and Yud Yud is the idea of the Yerushalayim and the Shemir Sanayim, the concepts of these two holy places of our, of our face. They're not stum there. We don't just have these things to then go do some external plastic surgery or care about how we externally, superficially look. They're there for their godly image. They're, that's why you shouldn't play around with it. You should made you exactly the way you should be. You should be happy with how Hashem made you. It's beautiful. And the concept of being able to bring out the, the Mashiach to light in everything, inside humanity and inside everything we're doing. So that's the Agadosh of Pesach, and that goes eternal, everything we did Pesach night. And that's a comfort to us, to all the souls, that they have eternal value and everything they've done accomplished eternally. And it gives us a tremendous comfort in everything we're doing. I just want to end off with a tremendous Hashkach of Pratis. Uh, that's taken place in the world of divine providence and that really was how I ended off my speech on Shabbos I remember being asked to give this over again the idea of divine providence that everything has a shkach pratis, has a flow remember we're talking about the Mashiach flow the key is to tune ourselves, allow ourselves allow our hearts to open up to this flow that was what brought me back to Judaism that's what macabre my soul back to Hashem was this divine flow the soulmate the souls around us, the souls in yeshiva, the souls at work, the souls in everything you're doing, every time you go to shul, in Chirat David, or whichever community you're part of, there's tremendous hashkacha, plus divine providence. And as my daughter said to me, that the souls were meant to be, are meant to be, and the ones who were taken back to Hashem were taken because they're, they're holy souls who no longer need to be in this physical world, and they've done their ticket, and then they, other souls come down. We have new children, new, new opportunities, this is a very deep concept, but it's a divine providence. Everything is meant to be the way it's supposed to be, with tremendous detail. So it comes out in the Daf Yomi. You, know, you can see it's a little bit beaten up. I'm learning for many years, thank God, many cycles of Daf Yomi. And we're holding right now in Sota, yeah? the Masechta Sota. Thank God, in Daf Yud Aleph, Yud Beis, Yud Gimel, all these Daf are talking about Yitzhak Yisrael. So the Ashkach of divine providence is everyone who's learning Daf Yomi after all the cycles since it began in the 1920s, which is uh, over 100 years now, thanks to Rameya Shapiro's Muslim, the concept that we are holding out a point of Yitzhak Yisrael in Pesach at a time where we need more and more love and more and more encouragement than ever. In the end of days, we need that chizak. So we're learning in a mesechta, all about really, which is challenging loyalty and reminding us to be loyal to our loved ones, to be loyal to Hashem Yisbarach, to focus on the loyalty. And then comes in the Gemara, Duffin, pages and pages, talking about all the different aspects of Yitzhak Yisrael. Because right. Hashem's reminding us that going out of Egypt is, is the mitzvah that we can remind us of daily. It's not just something which is only pace of time. It's eternal mitzvah. Every day, as the Balatonia says, we have to go out of Mitzrayim. We have to see ourselves going out of Mitzrayim. All the time going out of the limitations of the body and becoming more soul. This is how we have to spiritualize this world. This is who we are. This is our purpose. This is what we're here for. I mean, look, I could just read Gemara after Gemara. Um, but, you know, it says here, I'm also yom esrim ve'echa benissim. Yeah, the 21st of Nisan, which is going to be tomorrow night and the next day, the Shri Shal Pesach, the iron, 
the Ego Matzah, the circle, the Malchus Sadiqim. We're going to see that manifest, please God. In the Gemara, Armo Malach Yeshaya Sifna Kodesh Brochu said that an angel is in front of a Kodesh Brochu, a Bodesh Shalom, is Dafyud Beis, Amit Beis. Tremendous Hashkach Pratis, you know? Says here, Malach Yeshaya Sifna Kodesh Brochu, a Bodesh Shalom, Misha Asid Lama Shira, Alayam, Biyomze, Yolka, Biyomze, Rab Achab, Rab Chnina, Amar Rab Hayom, Shisha, Besivan, Amo Malach Yeshaya Sifna Kodesh Brochu, a Bodesh Shalom, Misha Asid, a Kabul Torah, Mahasina, Biyomze, Yolka, Biyomze. Yeah, it's each time it was the Mandama Shisha, the Dissim Mishrachzla, Yemi Yerechidama Mash, Yiva Ba'adam, Mace, yeah, this is all about Moshe Benu. He was born on the seventh Vada, he was nipped, he was nipped on seventh Vada, and he was he was on the on the sixth of seven, so it was three months, yeah. That's when he was able to uh, the whole famous story when he went into the with Bas Paro. And the daughter Para went and took him and called him Moshe. The Moshe became Moshe Benu on that day. That was how he got his name, being drawn out from the waters. Yeah, this concept is so deep that the fact that it's all Ashkach Pratis is talking about this time period that we're counting and we're heading in and going on and on about what the Gemara is saying. But the, the main point is that the angels are singing because there's a tremendous Kayach, the tremendous power of Amisal, the eternal energy that we are manifesting when we do what we're supposed to be doing, all of us. And it's up to us to, to, to get that encouragement. Well, there are five or maybe six red heifers currently, because the next year we'll see one of them in the ashes. That's what someone wrote. If anyone will go on the I think that will. Yes, someone was just telling a chosel and color. They said they were, they were, I think they were in Tzvat, and they turned around, they saw a red heifer, and then it just sort of went. Interesting, by the mikveh Arizo. They're the people motivated me to do this class. So I'm going to wish them an eternal zivug just like we're talking about loyalty, this eternal love that we have, they should have be blessed with that by some Israel and their merit of doing this class. And all the merit of all the people who share them on a global, thank you. And we'll be hopefully seeing soon the flow of Mashiach open our hearts up to scream to Hashem, to, to allow the light of Mashiach to enter our life, the Ashkach of Pras, the divine providence, the flow that takes place of transforming darkness into light and joining together with each other through unity, through oneness, through achdus. This is the time to get that energy of dancing and love and song and turning around this pain that we're all going through in real ways. I've still got my sataka, by the way, so I'll dedicate that also to my refuah and the honors of Ben Khanaliba. Keep praying for me. And everyone else who's going through any kind of suffering, everything should be turned around to Rafua and Yeshua. Everyone should be blessed with a zivug. Anyone wants to send their name to Rosh Hashanah, please contact me, ellie.goldsmith at brezov.co.il. You've got the links below. You want to partner on alive.com. Keep, keep partnering. Keep sharing on the global. And tomorrow, just to remember, we have an opportunity, whoever's around in Eretz as well, to come to Frat and to Daven in Zayat Renan. We're going to be praying together a musical halal with Rosh Hashanah Katz leading in the community of where the D family are based, the shul, and we'll have a unity experience between two different communities joining together to sing and pray and thank Hashem for the hello at the end of the Chag with music, and hopefully that will bring us into Shvisha Pace in the right way. So everyone who's out there who can join physically can get in a car or figure out how to get to a frat tomorrow should come. And all those who aren't, I'm sure there'll be some sort of live feed to check it out. And I'm looking forward to joining you after this Chag the Meshitika days and the Sviras Omer of the of Gavura will see the intensity of the Avoda of Yushalayim and how the light and the and the Korbanis that will bring the joy and the Kapara and we won't have any more of these tragedies because Mamish and Mizoka to see the Khir Samasim and Mashir Sakana bin and Bai Shlish Mahabimani Omen. Thank you for joining us. Share them on the global. I love you all. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Much love. Keep sharing the love.